The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 4, language. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to develop critical language awareness. Learners should be able to identify denotation and connotation. Hi, I'm Nicola Shongwe. Welcome to Lesson 3. In this series of lessons, we've been looking at reading between the lines. So far, we've seen how choice of information and how placing of that information affects how readers interpret what has been written. We're now going to look even more closely at some newspaper articles and see what effect the choice of words has. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to define connotation and identify words with emotive connotations. Before we look at the newspaper articles, let's have a look at a more obvious example of where choice of words can convey certain meanings. Imagine that Mpo received this report from school. Mpo is a lively child. He is a leader who gains respect from other children. I'm sure his parents would be impressed. What do you see when you hear the words lively and leader who gains respect? When you see the word lively, Perhaps you're thinking that he's energetic and enthusiastic. When you see the word leader, it means people admire him and they look up to him. And when you go on to gains respect, perhaps it means that they look up to him, they think highly of him. In this example, the words lively, leader and gains respect all have positive connotations. So what are connotations? Connotations are the associations that certain words bring to mind. Depending on whether journalists use words with positive or negative connotations, you are able to tell whether their bias is for or against the thing they are reporting on. Let's have a look at a similar example where the words have been changed. Mpo is a disruptive child. He is bossy and terrifies other children. This report looks at the same sort of behavior, but in a negative light. Instead of commanding authority and respect, the new choice of words has negative connotations. Disruptive implies that he interrupts a lesson and that he is rude. Bossy and terrifies make him seem like a bully. What image do these words bring to mind? All that has been changed are three or four words, but suddenly there is a whole new negative connotation. This is the power of connotations. Let's have a look now at a newspaper article to see how the choice of words has demonstrated the author's version of the truth. Look at the following headline that appeared in the Sunday Times. Will Saddam unleash his birds of terror? Because this headline is posed as a question, it really gets the reader thinking. Now let's look at the word unleash. Unleash implies that something vicious is being held back. When I see the word unleash, I think of an attack dog that may break free at any moment. Birds of terror refers to missiles which Saddam Hussein has placed near the border and may use to fire on US planes flying routine patrols. The term birds of terror, however, is not neutral 
and has interesting connotations and historical significance. Here's a paraphrased version of an old story. In ancient times, a Yemeni army came to attack Mecca. The people asked their god to defend them and huge birds flew over the soldiers and dropped stones on the army. Even if you haven't heard that story, I'm sure you would agree that the following alternative headline would not have the same impact. Will Saddam fire missiles? A word like fire does not have the same connotations as unleash. Fire is a neutral word. Neutral words are words that do not have positive or negative connotations. Similarly, a missile is a missile. Giving the actual name of the object, the missile, rather than hinting at what it is through the use of words like birds of terror is far less likely to evoke an emotion from a reader. Let's have a look at this next paragraph. The roar of a jet engine thunders down the runway. In the cockpit, the pilot powers on the afterburners. The engine noise explodes, ballooning out into the cold night air. By using words with emotive connotations, the journalist is able to paint a vivid picture in the reader's mind. Roar and thunders show just how powerful and impressive the planes are. The pilot does not fly the plane, instead he powers it. This makes the pilot seem strong and in control. The noise explodes again shows the might of the planes. Not only is a vivid image created in your mind, but also this journalist has portrayed the US Air Force in a very positive light. The planes are portrayed as impressive and powerful with pilots who are strong and in control. If the journalist had not wanted to portray the US Air Force in a positive light, but rather just let us know what is happening in an unbiased way, how could he have conveyed this information in a more neutral way? So far, we've only looked at the title and the first paragraph. But if you have been carefully reading between the lines, you can already form an opinion about whose side the journalist is on. Based on what we've read so far, consider the following. Does the journalist support Saddam Hussein or the US Air Force? If you still aren't sure, read the following paragraph from the same article. Every day and night, pilots from this base patrol the skies over southern Iraq. We have to be on the lookout for anything suspicious, one of the pilots says. The Iraqis may try to sneak a military plane underneath a civilian aircraft. This paragraph is particularly interesting because it quotes an American. Let's look at the words he uses to describe what the US is doing compared to what he thinks the Iraqis may do. The pilots patrol. This sounds like what they are doing is to ensure peace and order. We think of policemen on patrol. Also, they do it day and night, showing planned and regular commitment. Now, let's compare this regular peacekeeping patrolling to what the Iraqis are doing. The US has to be on the lookout, in other words, be on guard, because the Iraqis may do things that are suspicious or sneaky. This makes it seem as if the Iraqis are devious and need to be monitored because they may engage in unethical activities if they are not controlled. Notice also who the journalist chooses to quote. What would an Iraqi have to say about the American patrols? What sort of words might they choose with what connotations? Now let's recap. When you 
are reading a news report, advertisement or review, remember to look at the words that have been chosen. Not all words are neutral. Some of them have positive or negative connotations. When journalists, politicians and advertisers want to convince you of something, they frequently make use of terms that are biased or loaded. Be especially analytical of texts that contain a lot of adjectives, as these provide many opportunities for conveying opinion. For today's task, I'm going to show you another paragraph from the same article that we've been looking at. I want you to identify the words with connotations, state what you associate with these words, and rewrite the paragraph so that it is more neutral. Here's the paragraph. You may want to copy it down. Pay attention to the dramatic words. You will need to find more neutral words to replace them with. The momentum towards a real war is building once again. The diplomatic wrangling is fast coming to a head. The positions on either side are irreconcilably hardening. As we've done in previous examples, you will find this easiest if you read through the paragraph and underline the words that appeal to you on an emotional level. You can then select alternative words and then rewrite the paragraph so that it reads smoothly. We've come to the end of this lesson. Until next time, see you. Goodbye.